Okay, so I know this video is going to be very controversial, but in the interest of trying to find the truth, I am looking at some alternative information. And that has led me to question, do we have the right guy? Hello there. Um, once again, this video is going to be unedited for the most part, so <laughs> it is what it is. We are now three weeks without sleep, um, but I wanted to put this out here real quick because I, I feel like we should always, when we're investigating something, um, we should always be searching for the truth. And in searching for the truth, sometimes we have to go outside the box and I listen to all opinions because the truth is not usually just one-sided and as I you know I started just delving into some theories and whatever and at first I didn't really pay that much attention I was just listening but then there were some questions that I had and it, they really started to bother me and it made me think Oh my God, is Richard Allen the one that we're looking for? Um, so I'm going to share with you some of the things that made me question, okay? Again, I don't know. I don't know. But I would just want you to walk through this with me and see what you think. Because the truth is usually somewhere in the middle. Now, the one thing now, okay, I have been listening to a lot of different channels. One is True Crime Design and one is Julia Julia. I kind of think they're run by the same person, but then I've listened to a lot of other alternative channels and done a lot of research on my own, and I am just scratching the surface. But um, there were some really blaring things that I could not figure out you know, it just, it made me, it made me uneasy um, about this. And I invite comments, so walk through this with me. The first thing that I noticed that really gave me pause to question is Deputy Thomas's statements and his whole story. You know, in the very beginning of this, he was told to, um, find alternative people, like bring out in outside people, agencies, whatever, to help solve this case. And when he did, he saw some earmarks of what he called non-secular um, evidence. And I at first wasn't sure what that was, but we'll come back to that. But what happened is after he was told to do this, then they turned around and said no. Um, that's, we want you to leave this alone. And he kept questioning and kept throwing this stuff out there in the beginning of the investigation. And finally he got demoted. Now I know what that is like in a small town. It is, um, it's like a slap in the face. It's kind of worse than being fired because it is a stand down. It is a tactic. Um, like I said, I'm from a small town. Small town corruption is a big thing. And let me tell you why. Because it's not just about who is paying who, who's got money. We have something that's more important than that. And that is the red stuff that runs through our veins. And when you have a lot of people who are related, either by marriage or by, you know, blood, then you, you have this problem. Uh, you're not going to go against your kin, okay? It's who you know. And that is much stronger than, you know, maybe some things that bigger cities see in terms of favors and money. Not that that is not important, but, um, yeah, there are a, a couple of things. So when Mike Thomas is, talks about non-secular, I wanted to be sure I understood that term correctly. So I looked it up myself. Non-secular means, secular is non-religious. If you have a scene that is secular, there is no religion involved. But this definition, and I'll put it up here for you, 
it talks about it being of a religious nature. So there were religious elements in this. Um, and it doesn't, you know, I don't know what that means. It could be a Christian religion. It could be an alternative religion. It could be spiritualism. Um, could it be occultism? Yes, absolutely. Although sometimes I think occultism gets blamed. Um, it's easy to throw some things out there and, you know, make it look like something that it's not. But we will talk about that because um, I'm probably going to do another video on this and, and comment below if you know anything about it. But when I started, when I saw that term, I was like, mm, you know what, I've had a lot of run-ins with people of an alternative religions like that, um, but I don't, I don't follow those religions, so I really don't know about their holidays. I have a brief overview, okay? But what I do know is when I started looking it up, I started looking at um, the date of February, you know, February 13th, 14th. And for a lot of practitioners, February 14th is a holiday of sorts. It has to do with um, spring and harvest and planting and fertility and that kind of stuff. So, um it is interesting. We'll just put it that way because I don't really know what to say about it except that the 14th, which we celebrate Valentine's Day, which, you know, to me is a load of crap. Anyway, it's a marketing tool, but that's just my opinion. Um, I had to wonder. And so, I mean, I, I'm going to research that more. It is a thing, okay? It's a thing. Does it mean um, a lot of these religions that follow that type of earth magic are not into sacrifice? So I'm not saying that I think that is 100% it, but it does make me pause and question. Hmm. And so I started looking up uh, some stuff, and I've only scratched the surface, but there have been several reports that say that there is a a nice little band of occult practitioners in that area. So if you want to talk about that, I will do um, more. I, I've got to do more research on that. Okay, the second thing that made me really, really pause and say, what the heck is going on is, and because this is in black and white, I mean, you can't refute this. Shane Evans, the mayor at the time, and now working for the prosecutor's office, which, you know, I know that happens in a small town, but it's a very interesting position. He was, when they asked about his whereabouts for um, the day of the 13th when Abby and Libby went missing, he said he was at a city council meeting. Well, okay. First of all, if you, you can go on to, and I'll give you a screenshot, but you can go on to the Delphi um, County, the records that are all there, and you can see that they consistently meet on the first Monday of the month. Well, that was February 6th, not the 13th. And there are notes from that meeting. I looked at them, I read them, I really don't know what they're talking about, I don't know any of these people, but whatever. So why were there, why was there another meeting when they just had one the week before and there are no records from that day talk, you know, about who was there, what they talked about, why they had another meeting and even repeated attempts from people uh, to obtain the notes, which are public record, have not been successful. Okay, so Why? This is a huge red flag to me. I'm not saying that he was involved in the murder, but what I'm saying is, is what are you doing and what was going on? What kind of business, what, what were you doing that you lied about a city council meeting? There are no notes. So what were you doing? Um, that's shady, if nothing else. So, um, the third thing that was a huge red flag to me 
was, and I'll leave a link below to, um, because I'm not sure how I can use news reports. Like, I'm not sure what the rules are. Um, but I will link another video about the Patty family saying they did not know the Allens. Now, I understand if you didn't know them, know them, like you're, they come over for dinner. Um, but again, in my last video, I talked about the bartender who said that he and Richard Allen would talk briefly about this murders, but not a whole lot because they, quote, both knew the families and were friends with them. Now, even if Kathy and Richard were not, uh, you know, close friends with the Patties, there are extended members of the family that have taken Facebook pictures, you know, whatever kind of situation close together that shows that, yes, you did know the family. I mean, I know friends of friends, okay, or friends of family. I don't know them well. Would I say that I really know them? No, I don't. I, you know, know things that they've done with my family members, places they've gone, and a general idea. So if that's what the family meant by that we don't know the Allens, I can understand that. Maybe you just don't want to answer any questions. But it's still a little sus because you, what you should have said is, I don't really know them that well. Of course, it's a small town. I know who they are. It just saying, I don't know them, I you know, and acting like uh, these are people that just, you know, came out of the woodwork. Well, that's a lie. And this is what the problem is for me. If you're going to lie, just like the mayor, if you're going to lie about where you were, what you're doing, who you know, it makes me wonder this. What else will you lie about? Okay? That's, uh, it's not acceptable, especially in a case where law enforcement is involved. You need to be specific on what is going on. So, um, that's just my opinion. Um, now, this was brought up in some of the videos, and it is kind of a red flag, Bridge guy, my goodness, he could look like, I've seen so many people comparatively, the the photos, and I'll just be, ta I'll, I'll be honest with you, uh, you know, facial wise and stuff, kind of looks like Mike Patty too. I'm not saying that he, that's him. I'm just saying it's not definitive. And I don't think law enforcement can say that's Richard Allen. You know, um, the thing about that video that disturbs me is as a nurse, one of the things that I do have to look at and I chart on and it's something that we're just trained to notice is the way that people walk. It's called their gait because a lot of times you can tell if somebody has a pain or an injury or they're just not the same as they were yesterday. These are things that we chart in our notes. So I look at the way people walk. Um, Bridge guy. Now, I know he's stepping over planks, and that probably changes his gait some. Um, but he has a very distinctive walk, okay, and mannerisms. And that is disturbingly, if you look at some of the videos, again, I'll leave a link below here that shows you that, uh, uh my alarm. I'll leave a link to the video below about that that has shows Shane Evans walking. He has the I mean honestly, he has the same walk, the same steps. So I was trying to find video of Richard Allen walking and the only video I could find was him getting out of the van at um court and you know kind of going around a corner. Um he had a little bit of a bobble in his first step or two, but I can't really count that because when you go to court, and remember I work for law, you know, with law enforcement, we'll just put it that way, um, the, when you go to court, you are shackled handcuffs and foot shackles, and those chains are huge. They're extremely heavy. Um, but I, I don't know if I could even walk in them, to be honest with you. So, 
you know, is his gait going to be different in shackles? Absolutely. And he only bobbled a little bit going around the corner. So, you know, to me, I couldn't, if anybody's got links of Richard Allen walking normally without shackles, you know, that would be helpful, I think. Um, but yeah, it is suspicious. It is suspicious. Uh, and you, you can't say anybody's guilty, but it's suspicious that you cannot prove where you were earlier in the day and have the same walk as bridge guy it's just a question okay not an accusation it's just a one of those things that make you go hmm uh the the evidence against richard allen is in my opinion flimsy flimsy unless they have you know a whole lot more that they have not told us about um and, and you know now there's a gag order and all that kind of stuff so but the bullet, yeah, it's going it, to, it's too debatable. Uh, I don't see, if I were on the jury, that wouldn't be, um, bridge guy wouldn't be for me either because it is too indistinct. They, I, I hope they have some better evidence than that if they're going to actually put him on trial. And, uh, you know, I started thinking about, you know, we're looking at the pictures of Richard Allen and, you know, he's got this very intense stare and on one hand, okay, on one hand, you know, he looks very intense, scary. You know, some people have said like a monster. And then I got to thinking about it, playing devil's advocate here. What if that stare is fear? What if he is terrified for his family, for himself, he really doesn't know how he ended up in this position. And that look of intensity is pure out fear. I mean, you know, I'll just say this. Jail is a rough place, no matter where you are. And he's in, in prison right now. And that is um, that's pretty rough. So, you know, I don't know. I don't think we can, I don't think we can judge on any of these things. Could he be guilty? And if he is involved, and I think that's really what the police are saying, not that he's the perpetrator, but he was involved. And, you know, if he was involved in this, again, I, I have no mercy for child killers. But there are just some things that don't add up. Um, and so I'd like to hear your opinion because, especially if you are from that area, uh, there's a lot of things that, you know, people can't talk about there. As I'm finding out, going back through, you know, you can't believe everything that you hear or read on different platforms or blogs or whatever because that's not real evidence. But should you take into consideration that there might be some truth to that? Oh, yeah. I think we should, in the interest of fairness, because, I, I mean, you know, when I cover my vintage crimes, you know how many times we've seen that people are just strung up uh, without a trial at all, or, you know, sentenced, and they're obviously innocent, and then, you know, 50 years later, they're exonerated. I mean, it's ridiculous. Um, there is a very high statistical uh, study that says that a lot of prisoners are not guilty. A lot of executions, they've not been guilty. So there you go. Anyway, tell me what you think. Um, but this is kind of where I started. I, I wasn't planning to do any more uh, videos on Delphi until I started looking at some stuff that made me very uneasy. You know, in that pit of, pit of your stomach, uneasy. So, yeah, comment below um, if you... If we have a good discussion, I will put your comments in the next video. If not, I'm in the meantime, I'm diving deep into this. So, uh, yeah, it is what it is. I am going to go right now. I've got to go to work, but I will see you next time. Have a great rest of the week. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.